It's a new day here in the shop. I'm rested, sober, and over my cold. So we're back to the linear rail project for the plasma table slash router table. And I've got a couple of thoughts that uh, from running the rest of these holes that uh, I wanted to share. So in the previous video, I was drilling, I was spot drilling, tapping um, eight holes in a row, and then I would re-reference um, I would move the bar down and re-reference off that last hole. So it occurred to me, obviously, I was having trouble getting it perfectly centered or closer to perfect. Um, and what I ended up doing was on the, I took out the last tapping cycle on the last hole. And then I added the tapping cycle back in for that hole on the next cycle. So basically, I had a drilled but not tapped hole in the very last position then when I moved it down I could re-zero off that hole with just with the drill bit um, for my X position and then when it came back and re-ran that cycle it would only tap that first hole after drilling the others and then it would go all the way through tapping but not tap that last hole so I would have that just drilled hole again as I moved it down to re-reference um, so that, that worked a lot better to get the rest of my holes drilled and I've got the rail I've got it screwed in on the other end um, I basically used undersized screws so that these will have some adjustment in them because what we're going for is obviously I can shim it up and down um, but what I wanted was to have a little bit of play side to side which is what I have um, you can see there and I have it. We made it. We did a pretty good job. Got all the way down to the other end, um, and the holes, you know, lined up. So we were we're pretty good on that uh, on zeroing on X for running. I think it took. Well, I didn't run full cycles because of some of the issues we had in the previous video, but um, I think it would probably take about three cycles to do each six foot section. Um, there's obviously some math easy enough in there, but. Um, yeah, it, 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 so far it's worked out really well and the whole idea of it um, goes real well. I haven't really solved the coolant issue. I think the main thing to do would be to not run coolant. Um, you know, I'll probably try that on the next one because it just, I mean, it gets everywhere. It runs out the tube onto the floor. As you can see, it's, I only ran a couple cycles to finish and we got coolant running all over the floor. I did end up putting more coolant back in it. Um, I put about three gallons back in it and that fixed the issue with the smart cool that we're having in the previous video um, of it just having a fairly limp stream there. Um, I did talk to Tormach uh, earlier today about my issue that I was having with the conversational um, drilling and tapping uh, or no with just the tapping not drilling not tapping all the listing all the holes to tap in the g-code and they know about that and they're going to be fixing that in the uh, uh, 1.9.8 uh, version that's coming out of that um, they also are sending me some parts for my uh, turret to fix that part of it was an update it sounds like that um, my older lathe didn't have so we're going to get that get the uh, get that turret install finished um, so they're sending me a new a new board controller board for the turret and a new capacitor and I, because this was built in 2014 they said based on the serial number that with this newer version of the turret that I need to have a firmware update on the on the lathe control board so they're gonna send me those parts out and we'll hopefully get this project buttoned up I've now got all the drilling and tapping done on the uh, complete length of the rail. I've got both of them done. Um, I really like doing it this way. It does allow you to get it. I mean, once you once you've got your Y coordinate set, you're you're perfectly you know perfectly in the center of the tube. Just when you clamp it back down in the vise, um, over that distance, even re, re zeroing with each positioning and um, you know just kind of eyeing it off the drill bit it, it worked out well I've got an, I've got I had enough slop in my holes intentionally to be able to you know I've got this tightened down now but um, to be able to move it side to side to uh, just to fine-tune to compensate for any 
See, I got enough fine tuned for any variability in, in welding the table together. Um, but, uh, you know, it worked out really well. Just run through those cycles and, and just let the machine run and, and drill and tap all those holes. It, you know, it worked perfectly. And I think the undersized fasteners, there's so many of them um, that, that that isn't going to be any issue. Um, I think they're maybe just two millimeter under what they're supposed to be. But uh, now we've got it. And, and that slop did allow, I mean, these shouldn't need any fine tuning, but if you, for some reason, had a little bit of difference, if you weren't doing it on a mill, had a little bit of difference between the, between the two rails, uh, it would solve that. But, you know, we've got a nice smooth transition with our carriage, and we can run, you know, run them both the full length without, without any issue. So um, next step is going to be to get the completed side rail, um, all welded up and then modify the gantry like I talked about in the in the uh, intro video to Mount it to these carriages, so we'll wrap that up in another video